99.5% of our huge code base is JavaScript. The other 0.5% is either shell scripting or Lure. Um, and we know that there are downsides and pain points to JavaScript, uh, to writing everything in JavaScript, mostly everything in JavaScript. But it's mostly fun and profit, and we have fun doing it. Uh, and JavaScript was created as a series of accidents. Uh, it, it was created in, in 10 days in May 1995 by Brandon Icke. Um, it was an accident because uh, Netscape told him, hey, um, we would like to have a... We would like to... We would like to have a, a language, a scripting language in browsers because Java is not enough and probably too big to be in the browser. Uh, so we made the language. It was almost completely Lisp with some things different. Uh, and then he showed it to Netscape and they said, no, no way, no way we're going to put Lisp on the browsers. So we went back and he rewrote everything, rewrote everything mm -hmm. in 10 days and ended up having something that looks a lot like this, has lots of closures, but it has a, a C syntax. So some people say JavaScript is a uh, scheme with C, uh, with a C scheme scheme. And well, <coughs> it, it has lots of, it, had, it still has lots of issues. Uh, I mean, we, we don't even have multi-line strings yet. Um, and that was because when you created it in 10 days, um, it spread a lot and people started using it and it was very fast, it, it became too big very fast for him to bring everything back in and change it again and solve stuff. So JavaScript practically was deployed in browsers too fast. Whoa, that's okay. But it got better. Uh, it got better with ECMAScript. And five, and I mean, it's not very bad. I mean, we have about 99% of, of our code in JavaScript. Uh, it's not very good at that. Uh, and it's getting some very new, uh, exciting features in ECMAScript 6. I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about some of them. I left most of them out because I only have 10 minutes with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to start with block scopes. Uh, block scopes are, are an interesting thing. Uh, I mean, not, not really block scope. It's, it's mostly the let syntax. So when you do something like this in JavaScript, can you all see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you do something like this in, in JavaScript, the, the function get name will be declared. Uh, I mean, it's inside that, that block scope. Uh, and it will be declared, but and name will be, the, the variable will be declared, but it won't be assigned uh, a variable, a val the value won't be assigned to the variable name. Uh, so if you call get name, you'll get a define it. And that's very wrong. Uh, I mean, you should, you should get a syntax error or something. It shouldn't even be declared or evaluated. evaluated. I mean, it should be evaluated, but not declared. And uh, let lets you create variables that are block scoped. So if you use let over here, the variable will never be declared. And uh, if, you, if you try to, to, to call that name, you'll get the reference error because there, there's no way. Uh, and there, there's no name. And it's only, you can also use it and make it valid for one expression only. I mean, uh, here it's false. And for only, only for this expression, A will be true. And then, uh, if you console the plug A again, it will be false again. So that's very, very nice. It, it saves you some two lines of code. Um, and there's also the const keyword. The const keyword is, is present in JavaScript now, but it doesn't do what you expect it to do. But you can, it's not read only, and you can assign it again. Uh, but now you can. Now, if you try to assign it again, you get a, a syntax error, of course. And it's read only, so if you try to change the variable, you also get a syntax error. Whoa. Now, this structuring. Uh, well, there's a huge pain point uh, that I feel, especially if you're writing parsers. When you have, um, because you don't have multiple assignments, when you try to, when you have to split uh, a string and then assign parts of it to different variables, you have to write like, four lines of code or something. You end up doing something like this. If you get the, if you want to split the, the basic authentication thing uh, that you get in HTTP, uh, you have to assign it to a variable, 
then uh, split it and assign the, assign the array to another variable, and then uh, assign the variables to items of the array, uh, if you want the skin and the, the, the authentication. And that's what, four lines of code. And because, because you have multiple assignments, you can now only do this, and it's equivalent. It saves you four lines of code. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can, you can also swap variables. If you have alt and scheme, you can just swap them from to scheme and alt. Actually, the second option will work. Oh, okay. well, oh yeah, it's a good variable. Because in the, in the, the third variable. Yeah, 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 third variable. I forgot, yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So yeah, three, three lines of code. Uh, just one question. Since you use the same variables, do you have to sign, uh, sign again with the bar? What? No, no, no. In the no. first case. Uh, this, this works for a bar. Yeah, but the names are the same, so they were assigned before. No, you, you still have to use the bar. Okay. Still have to use the bar. Uh, and the rest parameters, when you write functions and you want to have those rest of parameters that, I mean, you can either put them, not put them, put more, put less, and you have to get them away with those, with those little items. Uh, when you do something like this, uh, uh, then you shift and get the first one out. I mean, first you have to turn uh, the, the, the arguments into an actual array, and on actual script it's going to be already an actual array. Arguments is going to be an array finally. And now you can also, uh, you should you also have to shift it to take the first one out, the one that you actually want. And maybe shift some more if you want more before you get the items. And then you get the items and then move to them. And you, you get this nice kind of thing that is the Rust parameters that saves you lots of lines of code. Um, you finally also have default parameters. Uh, I mean, most languages have this. Uh, default parameters are awesome. Uh, you can find a default parameter and it's going to be one of the first. Um, we usually do it like this. And it gets pretty messy when you have more default parameters and well, you cannot even have default parameters before the actual parameters uh, that are uh, that are mandatory, and it sucks. Uh, what else? Object literals. Uh, well, this is not very impressive, but if you wanted to declare a new object that has name and value, and you have to have the keys and the values, uh, you can also do it like this, and this is going to be the same as this. Uh, the name, the, the name of the parameter will be. Assign it to the will be the same as the, the variable for the value. Uh, it's also also saves you with lines of code. And our function, something very cool. Uh, lots of people say that uh, the function, the, 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 the function declaring syntax is very long. I mean, function. In Python, you have def. In other languages, you have func or air or can. Um, in JavaScript, you have function, and it's been like that for lots of years. I don't have any problems with it, but now you have this uh, small thing that's, uh, that are error functions. Uh, yeah, so it will some lines of code. And you don't have uh, to do stuff like this anymore. Uh, this is a common pattern in JavaScript, var this equals that, I mean var that equals this, or var self equals this. Because when you switch the context into a, a closure, uh, the this object also is not the same as the one you had before. So you have to assign it to another variable that is on the, the outer scope uh, so you can have a reference to it in the inner scope. And uh, error functions don't have this problem. Uh, they don't have a different this. Uh, you can do it like this. Uh, I said this over 10 times now. Uh, so yeah. Here's the, the part, the huge parts on the other, the, the, other, the, the other function. So this equals zero, but this equals that, and this equals that. Uh, and you can do it like this in the newer one. Okay, symbols. Symbols are a very, very cool thing. Uh, you know when you declare uh, objects and uh, the property names uh, are strings, and if some, someone will, uh, is going to extend your object, the, you can have collisions in, in the objects. And well, this is especially a problem for huge libraries. I mean, imagine jQuery with collisions, it's going to extend something. There are workarounds, but you have to think a lot about it. 
the field of quantum computer collides with other people's properties. People end up having the, the underscore, uh, uh, prepending the underscore to the, to the, to the method names, uh, then they write two underscores, it means like it's getting serious, but that, but that's this. And uh, with symbols, uh, you don't have this problem anymore because symbols are unique. Uh, when you plot, you create a symbol like this. Uh, the, 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 the description text is optional, so that you can debug yourself, debug your code better. And then uh, you assign methods like this, and you cannot collide with this, uh, except if you have the same symbol and you're using the same symbol to declare methods. And you shouldn't do that. So then your access left with like that. And there you have a private method, a really private method. Not like underscore private underscore something. You can iterate on the over the object elements you don't you can't get to it? You can get to it. But it's private in the sense that you cannot create another one that will collide to this. Except if you explicitly use the same symbol. Uh, and symbols are unique. I mean, if you create, the, if you create two symbols that are, are apparently the same, uh, they are not the same. The symbols are really unique. And generators, something that I love. Uh, generators. I mean, when you're writing uh, code in, in, in JavaScript, uh, and you want to to have a function like return multiple times. Uh, you just put an, an on data or something there, it's like a callback, and you call a callback multiple times, it's weird. Uh, and it's a synchronous code. So now you can have a, gen a generator in Python. You declare it in JavaScript. <laughs> 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 you declare it like this, um, with this asterisk over here. And then you, every time you want to put something out, put something out, the function. It's, it, it will uh, be like if you were returning to the plans. Uh, and there are also iterators. So you can do like for n of Fibonacci, and you'll be getting like n will be a value for Fibonacci every time. If you, if you notice, this, is a, uh, this will look forever. And uh, you will be like lazy uh, iterating. If you do not. Uh, I mean, under the, the, the curtains, this is calling the next method of, of that function. That function will have a, that generator, I mean, will have a, a next method. And under the curtains, that for n of Fibonacci is calling the next method uh, to get the, the next volume of Fibonacci. And that's lazy, lazy looking, lazy iterating. Uh, you can make uh, an iterator of your own. You can keep calling next often uh, another generator. And well, you don't have to go through the, through everything. You can tweet it later. Uh, it will be very interesting. If people say it's going to change uh, the the way things are done in Node.js. Um, and the for of loop is also something new in, in JavaScript. But I don't have slides for it, for example. Uh, then you also have modules. Finally, JavaScript is getting a module system. Lots of people say that modules should be something. Uh, only in the implementation side of JavaScript, uh, something in Node, something in Browserify, uh, AMD, whatever. But JavaScript is going to uh, have a module system. And this is like you, this is how you declare a module, module something, block scope. And this is how you import a module, uh, something from a module actually. It looks a lot like the, the Python in the Python one. Uh, oh, yeah. And you can also, if you omit the, the copy braces, then you're importing uh, every the default uh, export from the module. And you can deploy the module like that. You can also import, you, you can put a, a URL over there, and it will work if it's on the same domain as you are, uh, as you are I guess. Um, and these are all, all the things I left out. Uh, there were a lot of things. Um, but, uh, I mean, if you Google it, you'll find it. Uh, and it's very interesting. The ECMAScript is, is really interesting. There is this thing that is traced through by Google. It's uh, an online transpiler. And it's very cool. Uh, when you run stuff, it will um, basically transpile to ECMAScript 5 that the browser understands. And then you can check out the, the output on your console. 
Um, so this is the case of the multiple assignment, then the swapping variables, then uh, the object literal taking I showed you, and then the console of me, and the outputs uh, first, hello world, the multiple variable thing, then hello world, well, I switched the, the, I swapped the variables that the console uploaded them in the reverse order, so it's still hello world, and then the, the object literal. Cool. That's not the one uh, yeah. I wrote it the other way. Um, so, which is that in <laughs> So, yeah, that's the, the new way. Uh, they don't have to declare the, the, the methods that are the, the keys that have the same variable name as the variables. Uh, and uh, basically, basically that's all. That's all I've got. And three minutes left. Okay. I have lots, lots of time. Should go, go, go. And uh, don't forget to check out the Cryolex. The Cryolex is a new meetup in Lisbon for JavaScript lovers. And I mean, well, it's very nice. We had a meetup last week. You have space for writers too? Or only for lovers? Hey, only yes. for lovers or for writers too? <laughs> <laughs> well, the anchor part was the first meter. From the first meter, we showed how only 20 something percent of the modules in NPM passed the tests, and then we talked about how bad JavaScript was. So, yeah, the hating part is over. Check us at hateup.com and hateup.com. Check the group, name it group, I mean the, the project name it group, and if you would like to have a talk over there, just have to create an issue. And yeah, that's all. We don't need to